hello i welcome you to this um, youtube channel and today we want to show us how we can implement mpls on our network particularly if you are a service provider the routers we are making use of for this video is microtic and it is running on version 7. microtic is gradually phasing out version 6 and i'm introducing version 7 into the market so this video is um, strictly for version 7. A brief introduction to MPLS it is an acronym that stands for Multi-Protocol Label Switching. Multi-Protocol Label Switching. And I like to time it as a routing using labels. Unlike the traditional routing where it is being done using the IP addresses. But for MPLS, this is achieved using labels. And on MicroTik routers, you have um, features that you can run using this MPLS, such as VPLS, RSVPCE, that is a resource reservation protocol traffic engineering. You can also run OSPF as a PECE protocol, per VRL, BGP instance, and so many other um, features, MP, BGP based. MP, MP BGP based um, MPLS VPN all these features which I'll be showing us in, in later videos and um, if you want to set up MPLS as a service provider there are basic requirements and number one is um, loopback addresses why do you need these loopback addresses it is um, advisable though it is optional but it's advisable that you configure your loopback addresses in the MPLS network because one um, it serves as a transport address and also the LDP session is not affected by changes of the um, physical interfaces. Let me also quickly add that uh, MPLS is a service and the LDP, that is a label distribution protocol, that's the protocol for MPLS. Another requirement that is needed for you to run MPLS on your network is the IP connectivity and this one is achieved by using an IGP that's an interior gateway protocol and for our demo we are using OSPF you can also use static routing you can use other forms of IGP with respect to the vendor that you are using but for this our setup since we are using microtic routers OSPF is the way to go so those are the basic requirements that you need for your MPLS to run on the service provider network, loopback address and an IGP. For our setup, we have pre-configured um, POP5, POP4 and POP3. We have pre-configured the uh, OSPF on it and we have pre-configured MPLS on it. We shall be showing us how to do this on POP1 and POP2. For OSPF configuration, we, are, we already have a video out and as you can see on the screen, the link to that um, video is being shown to us. So kindly make reference to that as we go proceed even in this video. So proceeding to POP1, also I have pre-configured the IP addresses and the loopback addresses as well. So proceeding to POP1, just a just a brief, uh, just a, a quick show to us as, as we can come go SPF as well. So that, just go to the routing section, then do SPF uh, menu. So the first thing is to create an instance. Our router ID is also our loopback uh, IP. So first thing is to create an instance. Oh, no dots. Then the next thing is to create an area. All our routers are in the backbone area and the area ID is 0.0.0, .0. so you can leave it as default and if you prefer, you can change the um, name, but I'm leaving everything as default. So after you have created your instance, you have created your area, then the next thing is to create an interface template. And what I need, I need this information. interface template 
so for this network i start from my um, blueback ip i leave everything as default i add other templates i just be adding the uh, network ips and the last one that's 15 so don't forget to check out the link on how to configure spf on version 6 and version 7 as it's been shown to us on the screen kindly watch the video so i'm done with the uh, OSPF configuration on pop one the next step is to configure my mpls and like we said um, we have configured the loopback address we have configured um, an igp which is uspf then we need to add interfaces that will partake in the mpls setup but first i need to create an instance for the mpls so just click on mpls and click on ldp instance tab then supply the parameter for your lsrid we are using our loopback interface for this the loopback interface ip and also the transport address and then an additional parameter is this address family we are running version 4 you can see you have two options here ip this is version 4 and this is version 6 well, the IP implementation we are making use of is version 4. So I check this IP. I apply. And so after creating the instance, the next step is to add interfaces to it. So just go to LDP inter, the LDP interface tab. Click your add button. The interfaces that will be participating in it are the interfaces that are participating in the USB for the core. If you look at the diagram, for POP1, the interfaces that are connecting or connected to your other routers are the ones that will participate in this MPLS setup. That is ETA2, ETA5, and ETA3 for POP1. For POP2, ETA2, ETA3, ETA6. For POP3, ETA4, and ETA3. For POP4, ETA2, 3, 4, and 5. Why for POP5? ETA2 and 3. So going back to my pop one, I will have in ETA 2, 3, and 5. So what I'll just do is to add the interface ETA 2, apply. I can copy it and uh, continue the addition. ETA 3, then ETA 5. So I will now go to pop 2 and run the same configuration just repeat the same configuration on pop 2 and you have your mpls running on your network so um, routing uspf create an instance only thing that you are going to change here for this basic setup your so loopback IP, then create an area. Everything is in the backbone area 0000, 000, 000, 000. instance that has been created. And look, then your interface templates. So, to make it easier for me, just go to IP address because I'll need to be supplying the network IPs starting from my loopback. And the other network IPs. So I'll just go to the MPLS section, MPLS menu to run MPLS on my network. Let's create an instance. And 
and the RDB interfaces. Let me confirm from the IP address section. The MPLS only run in the core of your network. So it has two, it has three, it has six. It has two. Copy. It has three. Apply, okay. Copy again. It's a six. Apply, okay. So this as these steps have shown us how to configure MPLS on our network. So to do some basic um, verifications to know the neighbors that are running MPLS with this pop, just come to the MPLS section and you look for LDP neighbor. So these are the ones that are formed there. You can see dot one dot three dot four. If you go back to your topology, this pop two dot one dot three dot four. Then um. If you want to know the labels that have been assigned to routes and peers from this uh, router, you go to your local mappings to, to see the labels that have been attached to the peers and their routes. As you can see them displayed on the screen. To also view um, labels for routes by neighboring LDP router, you go to remote mapping. This will display um, labels that have been attached by a connecting router like POP3. The labels have been attached to certain pairs. From this particular router, you can also view the labels. That's when you go to your remote mapping. So you see all these labels. So basically, what we have shown us at this moment is how to configure MPLS on our network using MicroTIC routers. The steps are easy and they uh, very simple to implement so i want to appeal to us to like subscribe and share this video we are also available for consultancy services troubleshooting services installation services anything that requires you to have a very smooth and running network you can uh, contact us and we'll surely deliver top-notch services thank you very much Hope to see you in the next video. Also, you can comment in the in the comment section. You can let us know if there are some certain topics or certain issues that you will want us to address. Kindly let us know in the comment section and definitely we'll take it up from there. Thank you very much one more time and I hope to see you 